Konichi One People's Son. This is Metal Grey Master, and this other guy is Ross Ferris. Yes, I am here. He is here, amazingly as it sounds. So we're di we're going to discuss about the new Sailor Moon anime, Crystal, and what and whatnot. <laughs> Ross, I know you, I'm aware you've already made a first impressions video about the thing, so can you summarize your impressions here for, for us right oh, now in a I few seconds? Oh, I can do it very quickly. It's pretty. I don't see why it needs to exist, but it's pretty. And yes, that's that's <laughs> going to be the light, the light motif of the recording session. It we're going to question why it exists in the first place. Well, I mean, we do know why it exists. Cash shining, nostalgia, cash grab, cow moo. Yes. I mean, we can already stop the podcast because everything that needs to be said about it has been said, but we're going a little bit further in that regard. And we're going to analyze why the entirety of Sailor Moon, how is it relevant nowadays or how it is not, and... What exactly is the new Sailor Moon anime? Because uh, if you if you just watch the first episode, you think, okay, they took Sailor Moon, the original Sailor Moon, exactly as it was, and just gave it a paint job. You know, like a, like an old car. You want to look, you want to make it look new, but then you realize it's just the old, still the old car you had 20 years ago, and it still doesn't work, even though it looks prettier. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. In fact, in general, um, I predict this suffering very much from what I like to call Dragon Ball Z Kai syndrome. Yes, but uh, yes, and speak. I I was going to draw a paragon, uh, a, pa a paragon. Well, well, yes, what, what am I saying? A, a comparison, a comparison. No, be no, because the Italian word for comparison is paragone. So ah, okay, that's, makes sense. That's that's where the confusion comes. So anyway. The thing about Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Kai is that Dragon Ball Kai is basically Dragon Ball Z, only without all the filler and all the awkward poses in between battles and all the stuff that nobody likes about the original show, and with an improved, you know, uh, animation with an higher budget, with, which doesn't hurt. But the thing about Dragon Ball, and I mean the original show, is that Dragon Ball is still somewhat timeless for a variety of reasons, because uh, mainly because of all the fighting that pretty much... All... Yeah, you can't really say anything bad about the fighting once they get around to it. <laughs> yes, be well, yes, but again, Dragon Ball Kai is Dragon Ball Z without all the padding and the unnecessary stuff that <sighs> hinders your Dragon Ball Z experience. As dumb as it was, the fighting is what makes Dragon Ball still relevant nowadays, especially if you consider the fact that the most popular shonen action anime nowadays is basically Dragon Ball with pirates. I'm talking about One Piece. Or a Dragon Nothing. Ball with ninjas. That is, its popularity has been very much declining as of late. Yes, I'm aware of that. Uh, hopefully they'll end it soon. But anyway, if you look at basically it can be any like, popular shonen show can be described as um, Dragon Ball with whatever. Yes, well, and may, and and fr and with that, from that uh, base, we can construct something more interesting than Dragon Ball, or something even worse than Dragon Ball, depending on your point of view. But the point is, Dragon Ball Z is still kind of relevant nowadays. It has this element, the fighting, the whole the whole thing about the fighting scenes. That it's kind of timeless. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to make a show that's basically a remake of the original without all the things that didn't work. If you think about Sailor Moon, on the other hand, Ross, please tell me, what is timeless exactly about Sailor Moon? Huh. Yeah, you have a good point there. Um, really, all Sailor Moon was was... Um... Kind of taking what already existed as far as magical girl shows that came before and meshing it with Super Sentai. That's... Yes, at the time it was something groundbreaking. It was something new, but there have been so many freaking magical girl shows that 
and except for maybe two that tried to do things mildly differently. We're getting, there. we're getting there because that's going to be a big bulk of the argument. But for now, yes, the thing about the original Sailor Moon show is that uh, it it had it used already pre-established tropes and uh, gave the gave them a new paint job, so to speak. And also a new some sort of new substance with the with the mashup with the other genre that, which made it something new. But before we even get to to see the Super Sentai All Girls Task Force fighting evil, it's it's still like a million episodes. Uh, like a lot of episodes. A lot In of the episodes. original Sailor Moon run, yeah, actually, yes. I recently had to watch that and. Um, let's just a, say it's. Grinding, it's let's just grinding, say it's about epi forty episodes before you have all five senshi. And by episode three, we're going. By instead, by episode three of the new Sailor Moon uh, anime, we're going to have already free Sailor Senshi, which <laughs> actually is closer to the manga. At least the manga wastes no time getting them together. It's just the anime filled it up really hard. But the, okay, the the pot the thing is that Sailor Moon, at at its time was something new, mm -hmm. and I stress at its time, that came as you said a lot of other anime that that borrowed things that that were established in this show, and there were also older tropes from from even older Magical Girl show, and when it when you go down to it, before we get to the good part in Sailor Moon, we have to wait at least. No, 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 five season. I remember the best season being the last two because there was something n new, but it, it was even the better season were still using that outdated, tired monster of the week formula that has never fundamentally changed. And, and come to think of it, that formula has never truly worked both from a logical and narrative standpoint because, hey, I'm a big alien um, entity monster that wants to conquer the earth so i'm going to send one monster and only one monster a week in this one specific location in japan and i hope i'm going to conquer the world with that yeah <laughs> yeah it just doesn't make much sense in general i think everyone's always poked holes in the whole yes. monster of the week thing but you also have you know a lot of other logical fallacies that you could point out from sailor moon and other shows if it's like in general like, for like, example, like how every, can like no every... one fucking recognize her? Well, okay, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that could be said for Superman, but okay, that's... Like, every single so-called fighting action scene is basically everyone else uh, distracting the, the big baddie and Sailor Moon delivering the coup de grace every single episode. Oh, and not, let's not forget about Tuxedo Mask. How could we possibly forget about Tuxedo Mask? Oh uh, yeah, because he he does so much. He he shows up. He he Sailor Moon, throws believe, a rose. Say, Sailor Moon, um, Sailor Moon, don't believe in yourself. Believe in me. Who believes in yourself? <laughs> basically, and then he's like pisses off. Bye. I can't actually fight. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that happens for like a a, bajil, a million bajillion episodes. No, they still Always. do that, even in the later seasons. I'm just like, dude, we know. already know you can't do anything. And hence, and hence, we have the reboot, which is the ex... Uh, not really a reboot, more like a remake. But it's the exact same thing as the original show. And wow, it's almost as if the last 20 years of, so of evolution of the magical girl genre never happened. It's almost as if something like lyrical... Magical Girl, Lyrical Nanoa, or even frigging Madoka Magica never happened. Because we still have Sailor Moon uh, being a whiny teenager, uh, waking up in the morning, uh, being late for school, bumping into her love interest, uh, talk, discussing jewels with friends, and fighting the monster of the week that's, that's, sent, that's, that's been sent every single episode to do something stupid, to find this crystal heart or some some sort, and there is the same villains with this, and the same characters with the same weak archetypical characterization, and nothing has changed for the past 20 years. 
Okay, to be fair, I actually really like the plot that she literally finds him in the tuxedo just walking around now. It's just like, at least in the original show, they put him in street clothes and gave him, like, that. really, um, like, really big sunglasses, so you might not immediately recognize this but guy. Not even, they're not even being subtle about it. What are, what, like, okay, what are, they're not even subtle about it. What are they going to do when they're going to introduce Sailor Saturn and Sailor Uranus? Are they going to have a name tag that says, hi, we are lesbians, ask how, ask how it feels. <laughs> We're going, yeah, to the, I mean, we're going to the gay pride wearing Rainbow Dash cosplays or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this show, man. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I love the fact that you immediately knew where my mind went to about the two magical girl shows that up the ante, at least. Of course. I mean, we, we, we talk about those plenty in our private times when we are in bed together, snuggling. <laughs> This never happens, folks. Do not write oh. fanfiction. I will kill you. Well, uh, it happens in Shannon's fanfictions. <laughs> and yeah, she has been and, rounding and... off a lot lately, hasn't she? Yes, she has. But anyway, she must have a second life as a magical girl, you know, because apparently all girls in their fourteen are automatically qualified for becoming magical girl because of the whole metaphorical puberty coming of age thing that. Basically, magical girls are the female girly version of Spider-Man, in that uh, thematic regard. Yeah, but at least us boys around that age get giant d robots of destruction. Ah, oh, I remember my first one. Thing fell upon me in my first battle. That fucking sucked. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, we better not talk about uh, kids and robots, otherwise we're going to talk about Shinji. And there's something that I hate more than then the pointlessness of current Sailor Moon is talking about Evangelion. So, <clears throat> back in back on track. Sailor Moon. <sighs> I saw the first episode. It's exactly like, like its original run, like we, it originally began. She uh, she has this... She has I this actually dream. did a straight comparison between the two episodes, this new one and the old one, because I have it on DVD, so I was like, no. <laughs> so literally, like... I can maybe cite three things that are different story-wise. Please enlighten me. So, like I said, the tuxedo mask thing I um, mentioned before. Um, the fact yeah, okay. that, um, was it, Sailor V was mentioned in the newspaper. And what was the last one? Oh, God, it was really minor. Um, goodness. Oh, we are introduced. Oh yeah, and how Mercury. Luna is it? Oh yeah, and how Luna is introduced. In the original, she was being beaten on by kids, and Usagi just, you know, um, went to a rescue. While in this one, Usagi just literally trips over the cat. Wow! So it's even so it's even less exciting than the original run. So wow, you know, I just I I just, watching the first episode. It was like it it felt like twenty years ago. Never. 20 years never passed. It was the exact same thing. It was atrocious and it was, it, it had, it screamed outdated all over it. it. It was just painful. And you know, the funny, the funny thing is, you can get away with something like Dragon Ball Kai because at least the setting of Dragon Ball is this alternate dimension that's somewhere in between science fantasy and various types of anachronism. Uh-huh. Sailor Moon is supposed to be set in modern-day Japan, and I swear to Jehovah, if I didn't, if 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 they had, if it, if I didn't have flat-screen computers appearing in the second episode, I would have, I would have assumed that was this still was still 1992. 1992. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my God, because everything about it is is such an it's such an overabundant anachronism. It's painful to watch. And I cannot, st and let's not even get to the fact that I cannot stand for to hear more than five seconds of that ear grating voice of Usagi. It's yeah, like, but ugh. that's how it's always been. I mean, literally, they brought back the original voice actress. What is like? What is she like? Sixty now? I mean, she is in wow. her forties. <laughs> but the, um, okay, the, the, sad, the sad thing is, the in, one in, thing... The in the Italian dub of, of the original show that I watched as a kid. Her voice was not annoying. America didn't get off so easy, but um, regardless, um, one thing I did want to mention. I am a 
Saggy, I'm in late for school. Oh, look, there's a pretty cat. Hi, pretty cat. Oh, no, I don't want to fight him, monster. <laughs> now I'm going to cry and whine, and apparently that's a weapon. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Oh. But anyway, something I did want to um, point out is... It's actually, a, it's, a, it's so, outdated. It's outdated and backwards. Actually, Michael. um, in my opinion, I think the art style, despite how pretty it is, kind of hurts it's the worse. show a bit too. It's worse. Okay, it's keep worse. in mind that for good or ill, the original Sailor Moon didn't have the highest budget, so it had a very cartoony look to it. Which, considering how um, many hijinks were usually going on, it actually suited the vibe of the show well. And actually gave a lot of energy to it it might not have had otherwise. And now we have this uh, new... And now we have this, like, aesthetic. almost super realistically drawn art style. Uh, uh, just, really. just, how, just how the animation is handled. Yes, it doesn't but, have and, that and, cartoony that contest, vibe. In that contest, all the, those... In that co that co that type of contest kind of emphasizes how silly and ridiculous those buns and gigantically long uh, air extensions on the side of the head of Usagi really really look ridiculous. Yeah, they do. Also, for some reason, all for some reason, all the ca all the characters have lipstick now. Have you noticed? Again, I, that's something that's consistent with the original manga. So whatever. <laughs> I, I actually prefer when they didn't have lipstick. I think it was more. I don't know. Uh, bless me. you, bless you, bless you in the name of the moon. <laughs> okay, uh, improvements. Uh, yes, uh, improvements uh, compared to the original show. Um, let's see. Uh, well, you can't uh, yeah, deny that the, the show, the, the, despite the, the rigid animation I was talking about, it looks good. <laughs> uh, no, no, I would have to disagree with that. You know the transformation scene. It's okay, okay, despite it's the transformation it's clear, scene. It's clear they spent the majority of the budget in animating those scenes, because they are in CGI. And, uh, and, they, and they look absolutely awful, because Japan cannot do CGI well, animation, CG animation, to okay. save its life. Okay, the transformation scene looks straight out of a PS3 video game. It looks that, really it, bad. It, it does look bad, but I'm talking about just the... Overall animation throughout the rest of the show, though. I mean, if you're looking for it, there's basically no shortcuts taken whatsoever. You know, um, here, here's the thing. There are usually two kinds of reboots that are... Well, if you're talking about reboots, this is not a reboot. It's a remake. A remake. It is a it's remake. It's definitely a remake. It's the most pointless kind of remake yet, but it's, it's in the reboot. There are usually two, two types of reboots. There is a reboot that takes an original uh, story and basically changes something about it and tells it in a different way, with different, a different tone or pacing on the way the story develops. And there so is basically, also... Full, Metal Pan uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood compared to yes. the original show. Oh, although, although, to be more precise, Full Metal Brotherhood is more like a, the, the official adaptation of the manga. Yeah, so, but I'm just saying um, yes, that's uh, kind of yeah. or, or for example, Man of Steel last year, which is um, as an unfor which is an, as an unfortunate example as it is, it's still an example. But True. Another type of reboot is when you actually uh, do that kind of thing, except you pretend the story is actually in continuity with the original product. That usually leads to complete disaster, like the the so-called reboot of Cyborg 009 by Production IG, which is the worst, most pretentious clone of Ghost in the Shell I've ever seen. With an I have that, not with an, watched with an, either the original or that, so I can't really weigh in on that don't, one. You don't really need to, because as soon as you see in this film, you, you automatically assume this is the worst reboot in the history of anything. Even right. though you might have not seen the original show, you, it's so bad. But anyway... I was hoping this reboot would be uh, like the first example of reboot, 
I illustrated you. You know, they were going to tell it differently. Maybe they were going to start with showing the supposed war on the moon, and then uh, first. Off, I don't know. That would have been interesting. Then, yeah. And then we and then we start with uh, the enemies of Sailor Moon already knowing who Sailor Moon was and targeting her to begin with, and she needed help, so she needs to become and to become Sailor Moon fast and grow fast and grow up faster and eliminate eradicate the obnoxious monster of the week formula because it's insufferable and it was going to be and i hoped i hoped it was going to be like that well it's... i had honestly hoped that they were actually going to start with the prequel manga the sailor moon that never got animated maybe they're going to do that if this is successful but, but... i mean that that would have been the perfect place to start like, you know, to start with the Sailor V manga, you know, run that, and then, you know, go into the um, Sailor Moon adaptation, and, you know, basically try to tie in all the events from that to this adaptation, and, you know, that would change things up just enough, possibly, that would be worth existing. <laughs> Instead, it's just the original show, without all the filler and the padding, which basically, which basically, been, uh, which basically means that the entire first season of the original show can pretty much be summarized in 12 episodes, which is, seems it seems to be going to be long 12 episodes, because in episode 3 they're, get, they're, they're going to have Sailor Mars, in episode 2 they already obtained uh, Sailor... what's her um, name? Sailor uh, Mercury. Sailor Mercury, which is the geek of the group, and you know what? As, you, as, as things stand now, the freaking pilot of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a better reboot of Sailor Moon than the Sailor Moon remake. I mean, in fact, the first two episodes of that show, the My Little Pony, is basically is a better first season of Sailor Moon. It basically some in two episodes. Hey, hey, I am this hey, I am this character, I meet this other character and we fight the big baddie in the second half and we win the day. From what I it. understand, um just by what I was told about the original manga, which apparently they're sticking to really closely. In fact, almost as frame to frame as possible. You yeah. know, say what you will about that approach. Um, but apparently, oh, the it's it's slated to run twenty four episodes, and basically, oh. once the third lieutenant shows up, that's when it starts. Um, twenty four episodes of this? No. And, and oh, that's just for the um, Queen Barrel arc. I mean, I know, I know. I mean, we have to, we we'll have to wait like a couple of seasons before the interesting characters are going to show up. Like, you know what I fucking love about Sailor Moon? That literally time travel is the B plot. <laughs> <laughs> like most shows would wait until they're desperate for ideas to do that because they know how bad it completely fucks their own continuity. But they but Sailor Moon is like, nope, that's exactly where we're going after we be our first baddie. Hi! Uh, hi, I'm Chibiusa. I'm your daughter from the future. And I'm going to shoot you in the head. <laughs> well, it's still better than... Well, she's still better than, Ki than Kibi Kibi in the last season. Or as I, or, or as I like to call her, not Kibiusa. Chibiusa. Honestly, it, I have not watched the last season. Okay, the last so. season is probably the most interesting. Only because they have uh, some sort of super final super villain ultra mega powerful it's basically she's basically the, the she's basically the 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 thanos of the sailor moon universe that gotcha. ki that kills everyone so if this were a good show then they would go punch the god of death to death but you know this uh, isn't. In no instead <laughs> no instead that no instead she ends up befriending the god of death uh, which how if, I wish which, was Saint Seiya. Which, which, if it, which again, which again, actually, it kind of makes sense because uh, it, it, you haven't seen Avatar: The Last Airbender, which you should totally go watch. But at the end of the show, everyone was telling Sailor Moon, "You've got to kill this one because it's the only way. It's your responsibility." But I don't want to kill her. Why can there be another way? And eventually, she finds another way and. Basically, through the strength of, gosh darn it, you're going to be friend with me, gosh darn it! <laughs> She's, she becomes friends with her and basically reads her of her inner evil soul and she regains her true self. Because apparently this one, sailor, this one was a sailor senshi 
that absorbed the, the entity, the pure raw entity of chaos. Okay, and, you've said yes, enough. And, and, and at the end of it, everyone guess goes back to life, but that's Dragon Ball. But anyway, it, it was it was kind of a perfect finale for Sailor Moon. And before and before we get to that, we have like five or six seasons of other things that are not that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Although it's... actually, it's just like now that I think about it, actually Saint Seiya would do pretty well with a reboot. Mm. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, actually, if a show really could get off well with okay. it, couldn't probably they, okay. be that one. Honestly, honestly, couldn't they? Couldn't they do Sailor Moon, the new Sailor Moon, be more like Saint Seiya? Maybe without all the death and the blood, but still, <laughs> but still the fighting, the gosh darn fighting. Can we have somebody punching someone else? Can we have somebody throw some mad, some destructive spells? I mean, the season finale of the first season of Friendship is Magic and a freaking Dragon Ball Z battle with explosions and magic bullets and whatever between the main character going basically super Alicorn Saiyan and, and basically the devil. So, <laughs> so get on with the program, Sailor Moon. Get on with the times, please. Otherwise, you will never be relevant ever again. You already aren't. Now I just keep questioning why they haven't made a Sailor... Oh, um, no, sorry, Saint Seiya freaking reboot. Are you kidding me? With how dirt the freaking animation looks from the 1985 show, that would totally freaking work. Um, I don't know, honestly. I mean, uh, shonen action anime don't have any problem in being violent or even gory. Uh, even though they are, they are aimed at kids. I mean, have you actually seen or read anything about One Piece. Yes, yes I have. I actually have a couple of the manga here. So so really there is no reason not to have a reboot of Sensei. If you if you want to to be let if you want it to be less bloody, okay, fine. Just don't forget the action and punching God of Death in the face or something. I don't yeah, even, I, mean, I don't get... e I don't even care about Saint Seiya and all the gay and all the and all the glorified, gl glorified, that's in glorified yaoi. Just uh, yeah, uh, you know, because the show knows what its viewers came for, and god damn it, it delivers. It goes out of its way to deliver violence in each and every episode. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're going to move the story along? Oh, oh running time, oh, run time's almost gone? Okay, here's some minions for you to punch in the face. <laughs> You're happy, aren't you? <laughs> okay, um, okay, um, we don't want Sailor Moon to be exactly like that, but it wouldn't hurt for it to be a little more like Lyrical Nanoa, for example. Yeah, there is a yes. good example of something to be to take inspiration from. I mean, Lyrical Nanoa started off, you know, some like some sort of rehearsing the tropes of some sort of uh, of a uh, card, uh, card, card Captain Sa card Captain slash Sailor Moon 2. thing. Instead, and then it decided, hey, let's put some fucking balls to the wall action in here. And and he, <laughs> and, he, and he got rid immediately of the obnoxious monster of the week formula for, for a in exchange of a more of a whole and and sensible narrative that actually has a uh, that actually has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that mm -hmm. was only the first season. And we have other two seasons. And by the first season, it's basically turning to Mega Man X uh, versus. Uh, uh, it's basically turning to Mega Man X the third season. I mean, there were there were ja there were there were Ma there were Maverick robots rebelling, and there was a not Doctor Wily scientist, and then there was a, the the task force of magical whatever fighting against it. It's, it was I actually kind of, like the fact amazing. that for once the magic was actually technology. Yes, I like that angle. I mean, it's. Uh, it's, it's alien tech, newer. which makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like, why didn't they think of that before? Sailor Moon, can't you be a little more like Lyrical Nanoa, please? No, no, instead I'm going to whine and scream every time I face a monster, and apparently they gives me superpower, because Princess Yeah, Yeah, um, you realize that, um, I that don't know a... how much you remember of Sailor Moon, but Usagi sucks well into, like, the third season before she finally, like, becomes even somewhat competent. Hell, at the end of the first season, it's literally her incompetence that gets everyone killed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay, since Red, why won't, why won't we do, why 
why don't we do a general, you know, summarization of the first two episodes of the show that we've seen? I mean, there, there isn't much <sighs> to say. There's not much to talk about, but okay, so episode one, Usagi becomes Sailor Moon. Sucks. Okay. Sucks you know, hard. Yeah, there, is, okay, <laughs> there is one thing. There, are, there is one thing that I actually liked about that. Okay. Uh, she. Okay. She comes home and she shows her mother her terrible okay. scores and mom snaps and throws her out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was funny. That, that was, was funny. pretty funny. So yeah, but that's <laughs> okay. basically the summary of the first episode. She becomes Sailor Moon. She has no idea what she's doing. No combat training. No nothing. And. You know, if you think you're a 14 year old girl just giving superpowers out of nowhere, you have no idea how they work, and now people are trying to kill you, you're probably going to start bawling your eyes out too, realistically. <laughs> oh, and you know what? And, okay, I and what baffles me is that I I still remembered some of the some of the very forgettable side characters, like that nerdy, swirly glass guy who looks you... like Doctor Insano. Yes. Uh, he was Dr. Insano before Dr. Insano. I know. And I still remember that freaking guy from the arcade house that she has a crush on, and she's some, and he's supposed to be the Jacob to her Edward. In the yeah, show. they didn't really that. do freaking anything with him, do they? <laughs> no, they didn't do anything with him, but they, they kind of put... Put him, at, put him there as a tease, you know, as an alternative to the pe the perfection that is the Tuxedo Mask guy, which I don't remember his name. Yeah, so, moving on to episode two. Okay, um, we, we are introduced to Sailor Mercury, so we, we kind of skipped um, uh, 50 episodes of the original show to get there. Actually, about seven, but... <laughs> oh gosh, seven episodes before the first one, before the first Sailor Moon companion shows up my gosh okay so she's sailor mercury and of course she has a lipstick and of course she is good at everything and uh, the, there is this this other monster girl kind of creature that has a fiendish plan to brainwash teenagers so they can be better at studying Basically, yeah. like, we'll put every intelligent person into a class and have them crunch numbers to locate this silver crystal, because that wow. will somehow be helpful. So, okay, no, okay, no, clearly these villains know what they're doing, you know, instead of, you know, <laughs> sending most, uh, plenty of Armenians in various parts of the city, or even various parts of the world, they want to send this one, one minion every week, just in this one city... And do something that doesn't amount to really anything in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So anyway, are they, basically, are the are the evil guy? Are the okay? Are the evil guys working for Mac for for Akros? <laughs> yeah, right. We are, we are, we will one day we'll conquer the world, but first we need to start slow, and we'll just conquer this city first. <laughs> so, basically, yes. Something. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so Mercury basically has a slightly more useful power than Bubbles, but still not by much, and Sailor Moon still sucks, but still has to do the death blow, because let's face it, Mercury has no offensive power whatsoever. She creates fog. Why? Why fog? How does that link, link back to her personality and her characterization, which is really bare bones to begin with? How yeah, she's like, I am smart. That is my character. Uh, and see, that's why the show, that's why the original show hasn't aged well, because, because the very genre it's been a pioneer of has, has taken has huge evolved, steps forward. Has, has yes. evolved through, through the years, has evolved. Shonen action anime have never, are still the same fundamentally. Yeah, you can definitely make that assertion. I can't think of anything that's really progressed well, what full, um, Dragon uh, Ball Z. The, but there is Full Metal Alchemist, and did you know Death Note is actually counts as shonen? I know it counts as shonen, but come on, that's not definitely what I'd call a shonen fighting show. Definitely not. Like, I, I have way, a... Death Note is overrated anyway, so... I don't know, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not I, saying I, that I, it's a writing toward the force, but... The more I think about Death Note, the more I don't like it. 
But, but anyway, anyway, the point is, basically, the shooting action show is pretty much perfected with Yu Yu Hakusho, and that's basically it. <laughs> I mean, they've just been want, rehashing that about, since then. If you talk about uh, action, yeah, but if you talk about, if you want to talk about story, then you have to look at Full Metal Alchemist. Of course, which is, by all, which is by all means shonen act, shonen and action. Mm-hmm. It's just not the shonen action formula. No, Which is fine, not. because the main reason it got so popular is because it decided to do something different. Exactly. Although but you could make a case really, that I guess... Really change the, but it doesn't really change or subverse uh, well-known tropes about uh, a genre, like something like Madoka or Nanoa did for the Magical Girl genre. So that's You why, know what the sad thing propo- is? That's why I... pro- fundamentally, that's why proposing a complete and earnest remake... Of, Sa- of the original Sailor Moon as it was. Nowadays, in 2014, it's just something that cannot be done on a logical standpoint. Just, It's just so outdated. It's counting what, what on count, nostalgia. What, what, even, even funnier, what, what counted as uh, progressive towards feminism in 1992 now, now looks backwards and just irritating. By the way, if you're going to stick this close to the original, why can't you at least get the same opening theme? Because that song yeah. is timeless. Like, I'm not saying the new one is terrible or anything, but it's certainly no uh, Moonlight Densetsu. Mm. Yeah, I would have to agree with that also. Oh, well. And also, we... if they actually had action scenes kind of like what they were teasing in the opening, maybe this show would be worthwhile. Just saying. Yes, just saying. <laughs> also, a little also better characters, please. I mean, it won't be up until season two before the interesting, before the best characters, Sailor Uranus and Saturn, show up. You so... also realize that they're still just in the second episode and establishing the bare basics of these characters. I Who knows? Know, Maybe the manga real... does develop them further. We don't know. I haven't read the manga. Have you read the manga? No. I haven't well, then... read the manga. Have you read the manga? I have not read the manga. So <laughs> that's my point. We may be jumping to conclusions on that one. Uh, but s- still... It's still the it's still that freaking queen from the first season. It's 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 her. It, that guy that that prince prince evil prince charming blonde hair dude king prince Henry guy. It's still him. And they're yeah, still, um, and well, they're still sending apparently from what was said in the manga, like he, he they get rid of him and they get rid of him fast. Like I think like by episode four of Crystal, he's done. Uh, that's a mega If they're following the manga completely, like yeah, he like literally is there and gone if you blink. That's a mega consolation. I mean, but... actually, the only baddie um, of Queen Bale's lieutenants that actually gets any time really in the manga is Zoisite, which is the <laughs> Zoisite. Yes. <laughs> How do you spell that? Oh god, um, it's Z O I Y C E or something. <laughs> no, literally, the only reason I've seen I know this is because in the Sailor Moon arcade game I recently reviewed. Guess what? They had the fucking text for that. I was just like, so that's how you spell it. <laughs> oh, Sailor. So if basically Zoisite's the one that looks like a chick, but isn't. Um, they kind of do all look like a chick. But I mean, the one that with the, the long, like, hair and, you know, oh, okay. extremely effeminate features. Okay, of course, of course, the vil- of course the villain male guy would look effeminate. Yeah, of course, they actually made it into a girl for the English run. So, until okay. maybe a week Yay. ago. Yay. So, maybe until a week ago. I thought it he was literally a she. <laughs> sure. And and Uranus and Saturn are just cousins or something. <laughs> oh, translate uh, localizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not seriously. Although something uh, that's a little we, more honestly. exciting at least is at least here they're finally re-releasing the original show when it's been like over a decade since that's happened and they're giving it a new dub. So 
Finally, they're making a dub that's not butchered to all hell. Is she, is she still going to be called Bunny? No, I think they're going to just keep it to the Japanese name. Oh, so thank Usagi. goodness. That actually makes sense. Well, actually, in the English dub, believe it or not, they changed it to Serena. That's funny. That's really funny, because in the Italian version, they they basically they called her Bunny, which is, actually, English, actually, which is English for Usagi. Yes, I asked, they actually, actually did that with the first rung of the manga when they first brought it over here, and I always hated that. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, Serena, I don't mind. If you think about her true name is what, Princess Serenity, so Serena, uh, I, I can buy that, could at you least. Poss- uh, could you possibly be more obvious than that? I, mean, I know, but you know what? If you're at, just, least, like, at least Usagi makes sense from a thematic standpoint because because of the whole moon bunny thing she's 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 as supposedly as innocent as a bunny and as annoying as a uh, as the goat basically as the gout the the one on the finger (laughs) and uh, just for more interesting this um they actually kept amy and ray's names the same in the english dub yeah yeah, so but, I'm, I'm, I'm um, sure let's see, um, Makoto gets changed to Leda, which I have no idea where they came Leda? up with that. Leda? Is she, okay, is she going to win the women's championship? <laughs> I don't know, like, <laughs> I have no idea where they fucking came up with that from. Okay, no, It makes no sense! And then okay. ben- Monaco got called Mina, which, again, I don't mind, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tuxedo Mask! Oh, His yeah. name was originally Momoro or something. Uh-huh. And in the English dub, he's Darien. Darien! <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, and um, you know the best friend character, Naru? Mm-hmm. She's Molly, and she has an over-the-top um, New York accent for no reason. <laughs> oh, oh, and the boy. Doctor Insano boy. kid? His name is Melvin. Melvin! <laughs> Bacora! <laughs> it's time to take. Will you give me a hug? <laughs> Something. Melvin. It's Yu Gi Oh reference. Yeah. Yes, I get Yu-Gi-Oh it. Yu Gi Oh abridged joke. Yeah. Clearly, I am the master of unlucky. No! This door is a bitch! <laughs> like, seriously, like. The name changes just seem all over the place, especially for the minor characters, because sometimes they'll keep the Japanese name, and sometimes they won't. Uh, and it makes no sense okay. when they do one or the other. Okay. <laughs> like, sometimes they'll even have a really long Japanese name that's difficult to pronounce, and sometimes they'll be like, eh, let's change um, Moku to um, John. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, what the fuck are you doing, guys? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. The opening, the first few minutes of the first episode of the, the Crystal remake. The only thing that was... Okay, you can you can do a beer-drinking game for every single uh, magical girl, or indeed shoujo, anime slash manga cliche ever to be had. Beginning a story with a dream of something beautiful. Take a sip. Take a shot. Uh, being uh, awakening uh, some hijinks during morning. Take a take a shot. Being late for school. Take a shot. The only thing that was missing is if she, is if she was running towards the school building with a with, with toast, toasting with her toast mouth, bread, right? With toast bread in her mouth. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that's the only thing that was missing. Yeah. That's the only, oh, and she didn't bump into her love interest while running. Now she. She actually See, she does it later by throwing her testing his face, but yes, still. She does twice in two episodes, by the way. And of course, it was love at first sight. But she doesn't know it yet because she's young and she doesn't understand it. So she It's really thinks, more so dope at thinks, first sight. So she thinks she hates him because he's kind of a obnoxious smartass. That's what he uh, is. You also have to remember that he is out of college and she's oh. 14. Oh yeah, but you know the age the age of consent in Japan. Japan is, in many areas is thirteen, I know, I know, I know. But, but, still. but, on, but only only with people with of, your own, of your own age. Yes, I'm aware of, so still that's creepy and so I can't believe creepy. no one ever points this out. So yes, it's still creepy and it's still kind of wrong, even from a low 
low standpoint. So, yeah. But it's okay because they're reincarnations of lovers. Yeah. That also that, makes green that, green okay, right? That automatically justifies <laughs> everything about that. <laughs> Oh god, that's almost as bad as Angel Sanctuary. That's Don't know if you've ever all, seen that piece of shit, but... That's um, almost as bad as Moonface. No, Angel Sanctuary, okay. Uh, so you have story. two... So you have two lovers from a previous life that were reincarnated... Yes? ...into brother and sister. Oh no! Yeah. Well, it's... Okay, well, it's still better than... Not, it's still better than what they did with Dexter. In Dexter. Like, and we're talking about, like, literally but blood-related. They do not bow out of this at all. Actually, that's kind of interesting. It takes it, it takes guts to do this kind it, of stuff. It does... The show does have guts. Oh, I should say the manga, because the OVA is, like, what, four episodes, and, like, rushes things super hard, but... I don't know. Maybe something you might want to um, look up in your spare time. Mm, sure. Anyway, Sailor Moon. Concluding thoughts? Um, unless they s do something drastically different coming up, it's not really worth existing, as I've said before. Yes. I mean, I again, think, it's it's I'm really suffering to. from the anonymity in inanity of Dragon Ball Z Kai. Again, there's no particular reason for it to exist. But at, but at, the, but at the very least, Dragon Ball Z had, had one element that has stood the test of time. Sailor Moon had none of said elements. It's just something that's fondly remembered and it was important for its own genre and for anime, indeed for anime as a whole, but it doesn't really have any point being reprised in, in the times we're living in. Unless you put some major change in it. If you don't, then as you said, it's completely pointless. And I don't think I'm going, I'm going to continue watching this show. Just two episodes of it were more than, than enough for me. I barely, I'm probably I ba going I bothered, to... Uh, I bothered to watch the second episode just in preparation for this podcast. And no other reason. I see. Um, I'm going to keep up with it mainly because I do intend to give it a full review after um, it's finished its first season run because I figure any... You kind of had to let first story play out before you really judge it. Although I will say that after watching three episodes of the new Sword Art um, season, I must say Sword uh, Art is shit. Uh, <laughs> I hate Sword Art Online! And if you like Sword Art Online, you're going to hell! It's awful! <sighs> yes. Okay, so we better stop this before things go a bit out of hand. Yeah, I, I think you just pissed off quite a few fanboys out there. I don't hog. care. I don't care. Next, you're gonna tell me that Attack on Titan sucks goat balls. No, no, that's blasphemy. <laughs> that would be blasphemy. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's like saying that's like saying Jesus uh, used to used to do drugs. That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And the sad thing is, like, literally there's only three things coming out this season at all that are even mildly interesting. And Sailor Moon Crystal and Sword Art 2 are two of them. What's the third one? Persona 4 The Golden The Animation. Of course. Ross, may I suggest you to watch a show? May, may I suggest your show for your watch list? Um, I'm listening. I've only recently watched it and it's kind of fantastic for the most part uh psychopaths you know what i just um i i just actually was looking at amazon and apparently they had box sets for that on sale and i was just like ah oh, huh it's quite that's a it's thing it's quite good i mean it seems at some point you 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 fear that some point is going to fall for the ghost in the shell syndrome in which characters are just going to be standing around spouting exposition or some uh, stretchy philosophy philosoph philosophizing about the nature of humanity it does that a couple of times but it's short but for the most part it's a really rock solid show that's fun to watch and the pacing is kind of perfect and it never never lets up huh i'll have to keep that in mind so we should conclude we should conclude this topic and this podcast right now. Sailor Moon Crystal. It's a waste of time. That's what I think it is, judging from these first two episodes we watched. And 
And really, you kind of already figured out how it's going to play out after watching just two episodes of it. So I don't have anything more to say about it other than... Where is my real Sailor Moon reboot, people? Ross? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where there is. Is it under your bed? Go check it out, please. Checking? Nope, not there. Darn it! I was sure it was there! <laughs> it's not under my bed. Maybe either. I'll have to look in the fairy realm for it. <laughs> okay, I'm, okay I'm, go I'm just going to take a trip to Equestria to... Because apparently they have they have a better grasp grasp of magical girl shenanigans there than in freaking than in freaking Sailor Moon. Anyway. Okay. Well, Mad Hawk has lost his mind. So it's bye, guys. Pony girl. Bye. Skinny kawatte. Ashiakiya.